Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to make the covers for the C-sized, basically amazing printable scrapbook album. And we're going to be using, this is what we're making. This is the mock-up, the prototype that I made for this set of templates. This is one of the, the four sizes that are in this set of templates. And this is using the Darcel Paper Collection by Prima. It looks like that. In the last video, I showed you uh, everything that we were going to be using while making this scrapbook album. We're going to be doing a step-by-step, -step, and I'll have that linked up here um, if you want to check out what we're going to be using now before we get started. So these are the printable scrapbook album templates. Basically amazing. They're available in my Etsy shop, and I will have a link down below this video. If you hit the show more section right under the title, a whole box will drop down with all kinds of helpful information and links. Um, there's also a full playlist um, for this album, step by step. So I will link that up here. It starts with the introduction to the templates, then it does a walkthrough of all four mock-ups, then there is um, an introduction to the prototype, to the prototypes. <laughs> there is an introduction to the basically amazing add-on photo mats, and then the next video I believe is the what we're going to be using to make this album and then this is the fifth album or fifth jeez and then this is the fifth video and I, I add all of those videos at the beginning of all of my playlists for this set of templates just so that if you needed to see uh, what's all included in here it's the first video so if you wanted to skip all that and start the the covers then it's the fifth video okay <laughs> if that makes any sense but there's a link to that. So I have it up there and down below. I probably already put it up there. So we're going to make the covers the same way we made the covers to this album. And this is the D-sized, basically amazing scrapbook, a printable scrapbook album. So we're going to make the covers the exact same way. And I will have that video linked up here and down below because I'm not going to do step-by-step -step um, like I did with this one, but I am going to show you what you're going to need for this size, if that makes sense. It'll make sense in a minute. But anyway, so the step-by-step -step is in this video, so be sure to check that video out. It's it's super easy, and I'm using the exact same um, coffee stain paper and everything. It's just different set of templates. It's just a different page to draw from. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So what you're going to need for this album, oops, I'm going to have to do some static uh, de-staticking <laughs> of my templates. Oh, this is a workbook. This is my a workbook for the Basically Amazing templates. And this, do, this does not come with your purchase. The, this is a set of printable templates, not an actual book form. But there is, I didn't make this workbook on camera, but there is a video um, I'm sorry, there is a playlist where I make all different types of workbooks, and at the very bottom of that playlist is the way I made this workbook. So I will link that playlist up there. It's how I made my workbooks. Um, but then you can also see the different ways that I've made my workbooks. But when you've got a ton of templates in one set, I think it's kind of important because there's a bunch of pages. So I think it's kind of important to have a workbook of some sort. Yours could just be um, a binder with page protectors. Yours could be a folder with those little prongy things in page protectors. It doesn't matter. There is no rules of what your workbook should look like. Yours could just be a big folder. It, it does not matter. Um, but it's important, I think, because a lot of these are traceable uh, and you want to be able to trace them. You don't want always to have to print out. So. Workbooks for me come in very, very handy, especially if there's four sizes in this set of templates. So it could get super confusing super fast if you don't have it all in one place. Okay, so for the C album, you're going to need page 3C. That is the cover. And then in my workbook, I always put the mats for the cover, mats for the pages onto the page. Instead of having a separate page for my mats, I just attach it onto the page that it mats. So that's why you see it says mat for cover on page 3C, uh, but it's on the, the C cover page. So you wanna trace two of 3C on to chipboard. This is medium weight chipboard, it's like point or 30 point or something like that. 
Um, I have it linked in my Amazon list. That reminds me. I also have a special Amazon list just for this album. It's also down below if you want to check it out. Um, but you need to take your template and just lay it on your chipboard. Trace it out twice with a pencil and then trim it with your craft knife. And then you're also going to need on page five, you're going to need the four page spine. So that's the bigger of the two. And then you just take that and whoops, you just take that, lay it next to that, trace it out and cut it out. So you should have three pieces all together, two front and back cover, and then one spine. Okay. So that's all you're going to need from the templates right now to actually see a step-by-step -step of that, go check out the cover video, the, the D cover video that's linked down below. Um, I've done it the exact same way. I wrapped the front and back cover with this is coffee and tea stained paper. Um, if you don't want coffee and tea stain your own, there's a lot of Etsy sellers that do um, sell coffee and tea stained paper. So I'll have a link down below to Etsy. It's not mine, I don't sell it, but there's a lot of fabulous Etsy sellers out there that do um, sell, you know, sets of coffee and tea stained paper if you don't want to do it yourself. But I will tell you that a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet will not, well, it's harder to wrap because the covers are pretty tall. There's not much space at the top and the bottom. Um, this is a 11 by 17. This is 11 by 17 sheet of paper. I coffee stained a whole bunch of this. And basically it's two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper is what this is. So just like in the other video I explained, I cut this down, I cut it down, I think to 12. And then I wrapped it, I laid it on here like this and wrapped it that away. So this is 11 by 17, but again, I cut it down to 12 and I do have all my scraps. Cause you know, I'll be using these scraps. So I have all of these pieces right here. Um, because I'll probably use them. You know, I, I don't waste my coffee stained paper, my coffee and tea. Actually, mine is coffee tea. Mine's, let's see, mine's coffee tea vanilla, I think. Anyway, I just love it. It's a very pretty color. But I just wanted to remind you that I've been using the bigger sheets because these are really tall covers. And then I also have, a, I actually have a huge roll, and this is that tie back, the stuff that you can't uh, tear. Um, and what I've done is I've cut a piece that is an inch wider on either side of the spine piece and an inch on the top and the bottom. And I attached my spine piece to that. And then I also cut another piece, um, I don't know what, how, I think I just did a half an inch wider on either side. And I just kind of um, guessed, I just have it a little bit shorter, maybe an inch shorter than the spine piece. That's for, uh, covering the inside of the book, but this is going to be attached to the outside. So Tyvek is linked in my Amazon list and I just linked the envelopes because they were cheaper. So, um, there are sheets of You can get sheets and you can get rolls. I have a big roll, probably never, ever will ever run out, but, um, anyway, it's good stuff. And if you don't have Tyvek, you could probably use fabric you know, like muslin or something. Instead, you don't always have to use Tyvek. Muslin will probably do the exact thing, same thing. You just wrap it the exact same way, except I would probably use fabric glue instead of uh, double-sided tape. Okay. So again, I've got my front and back covers. I got three sides wrapped. Notice one of the sides on each one of these are not wrapped. You see there are two raw edges and that's what's gonna get attached down to the spine piece, okay? Um, you don't have to, it's just, it's a waste to wrap it. And I did it the exact same way as that other cover. I covered the entire board with double-sided adhesive and laid this down and then burnished, burnished, burnished this completely flat. And that's because it's such thin copy paper. This is just super thin copy paper and you would see any glue, any bubbles, any of that. You would see it straight through. Um, but I don't really mind that. It wouldn't even have bothered me. So, because we're going to mat it anyway. Um, so, you know, it's your preference. So, and then I covered the back side of this with double-sided adhesive as well. So this is scrapbook.com. Let's see, I use scrapbook.com. I'll have that link down below. Um, I use the big rows and um, then there's also the, the uh, score tape. I have one inch score tape. Um, I think I have that linked 
in, no, I don't have one inch linked in my Amazon. But anyway, the score tape's down below. If you, I mean, the um, scrapbook.com tape is down below. It's a good value. Um, it's a good bang for your buck, I guess, and it works really, really well. So what I'm gonna do, I think this is what I did differently. This is where I, I did something different than I did in the other video. I didn't put any tape on this edge, but I have this completely covered right here. All right, so I'm just gonna take one side off, and you notice the top and bottom are covered with tape, separate tape, so I can take that off at a separate time. But I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch, I think, from the spine piece. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, my grandbaby's here. She's seeping, whoa, I can't see. She's sleeping, but she might wake up. She hears me talking. She, <laughs> oh, you hear? Can you hear? Let me see. Let me check on her really quick. She has a full belly, and she's trying to take a nappy. Okay, so uh, I've got that attached. I left about a quarter of an inch gap there. Now I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to take my bone folder, and I'm just, wait a minute, let me see. What am I going to do? Actually, I think I'm going to, Flip that up on its end, like that. And I want to give that a burnish because I really want a nice, crisp um, spine. So I'm going to do that. And then I think I'm going to do the same thing to my, to my spine piece. All right. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, whoop, let go. <laughs> right, so I've got it attached pretty much to the inside of the chipboard. So now I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. Yes, looks good. I know it looks kind of weird there, but it'll make sense here in a little bit. Let's see. I forgot how I was gonna do it. Let's take one end off here. Should I cut it, do you think? Yeah. Let's just, let's just experiment together, shall we? Okay. <laughs> what are you doing, big girl? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. That will work out just fine. So it looks all like it's warped and and, and messed up, but once you get it pulled over, you're fine. Okay. Let's see, do that. Let's burnish that in there. Okay. Perfectly perfect. Perfectly imperfect, what is it? All right, so now, it's, see, it's, it's, it's not even the same width, but again, it's gonna be fine because I'm gonna bring some coffee stained paper around to mat it, so. Yeah, I think, I think it'd be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the backing off of this. Maybe. Come on, still learning how to use this giant We Are Memory Keepers pick thingy. All right, so I think I'm just gonna kinda try to, kinda try to, to eyeball it. I think I'm gonna flip it over this way 
and make sure it stays the way I want it to because I really want that to be a nice crisp um, joint there. you guys see that how crisp you can really see like it's like like a real book you know well I guess it is a real book <laughs> it's like I'm a real boy <laughs> it says I'm a real book okay <laughs> all right I'm gonna burnish just a little bit more yeah I can use this so I think I will um, I need a giant ruler is what I think I need. Well, let's say you only have, let's say you only have a 12 inch piece. So I'm going to cut this down to 12 inches. I'm going to cut the ends off, I think, first. So let's see, this is 17. So let's do, let's do two and a half on each end, maybe. And then this should, I should be able to match this right at 12. Yeah. Perfect. This is a Fiskars Precision Heavy Duty Paper Trimmer. All right. So then, what you want to do then is measure, because depending on your gap and depending on how big your piece is, you want to make sure that you cover it. So I'm going to go at four and a half. So that leaves me a quarter of an inch on the other side of that. So we get it good and covered. Oh, what did I just say? Four and a half. Did you hear the baby? Okay. Yeah, four and a half. So I'm going to cut a four and a half inch strip. I have it right? Yes. I need it to be 12 inches long. Four and a half inch strip. And then maybe, maybe I'll do a four and a half inch strip for the inside too. I won't need it that long, but Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this down to 10, I think. I think. I think that's what I need. Yeah, so that should go right there just fine. So I think I'm going to cover this with tape. I'm going to do it kind of differently. I think I'm just going to cover this is one inch score tape. And I'm going to use my block. Oh, there come my ruler. I could have got my two inch. I have two inch score tape. I could have got that out. Not score tape, it's um, scrapbook.com tape. I could have got that instead. Then I'm going to fill in that space there with this is 3 8 inch. I'm going to use my scissors for this one. And then I want to, I'm going to put 3 8 inch on this side. inch on the side. Shoulda, 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 shoulda. I think I'm gonna put tape down in the in the. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put. This is quarter of an inch. 
I think this one is scrapbook.com. work because I want to be able to take it off a little bit at a time so that I can get the paper worked in just just right. The paper is a little bit more difficult believe it or not than the Tyvek when it comes into forming it around. All right so then on this piece I'm going to put on either Another edge here. I'm going to put three eighths of an inch. I don't want to go all the way down. I better, I better stay a little bit away from the edge. Okay. I think I'm going to get. I'm going to try to help myself out here. I'm just going to use a grid mat so that I know exactly, I wonder, yeah, that'll work. So I know exactly where I need to be putting my paper. All right, so I'm going to take off these middle pieces here. So here's a baby. What you doing, big girl? <laughs> okay, so now I should be able to use my grid here and be able to lay my paper exactly where I need it to be. And I did a good job, I believe. All right, we're going to go ahead and burnish that down. Okay, then we're going to take this tape out. Uh, backing off of the little ditch there. Careful now. I'm going to work that with my bone folder. Just like that. Lucky, a lucky, a lucky. All right, so now I'm going to take this piece, this backing off, and the backing that's on the paper off. All right, let's flip it around and let's do the same thing. Alright, I think I'm just going to take some 3 8 inch tape. <laughs> Is that right? And I'm just going right, to burnish that in like this. And I'm going to go. Hmm. I wonder if I should just tape this part. I'm not really sure. Let's just try. I, I say it every time. I do my covers different every time. I don't know why. There's just so many ways you can do and wrap things that I guess it really doesn't really matter. All right, let's see what happens. Let's just go ahead. Oh, I wanted to kind of prep that first before I take that backing off. Now I'm going to take that back here. Oh, what you doing? I think I'm going to use my bone folder here. And there we go. Yeah, I just, I thought it was going to be a little bit too much, but that's okay. What 
you doing, big girl? So now we're going to attach this piece right here. Wow. I didn't cut something straight, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Since it's all the same, it does not matter at all. I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing like we did on the outside of the spine. And put some, t oh, I guess I could go up a little higher. Oh. <laughs> Hi. I guess I better do that. I don't want it to look different on each side. So <laughs> having fun? You're talking to the toys. No. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put some one inch tape. And then I'm going to put a 3 8 on top and bottom first of this piece and then down the sides. Just on the edges. <laughs> Are you saying hi? I could have, I would have bet you money that she said hi earlier today. I mean, it sounded just perfect. I mean, she's only three months old. Well, almost four, I guess. But still, I almost would have bet you money. She said hi. Hi. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to start with taking these pieces off. And then I'm going to lay this where I think it needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I so. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Sorry, <laughs> I keep talking to the baby, you guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but she's just so cute. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take that piece out that is in that ditch right there. And I'm going to burnish the paper down. Is it not burnished? What is going on? What? Burnish that down, and then I'm going to take this piece off. But before I take the rest of the tape off on that side, I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to take this ditch part out. I don't think it's as crucial as it was on the outside, but it does make a nice clean look, though. So. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to take this piece off. What? She said, Grandma, you're looking good. He said, looking good, Grandma. Yeah. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these long side pieces off 
and the top and bottom will be last. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back just a little bit. these up. Uh oh. Got off a little bit. Uh -oh. Hope it doesn't stick to anything. I got off at the paper just a little bit. The edge there. Alright. We're gonna burnish this down. We're gonna do the wiggle wiggle. Yep. We're going to make sure, yep, it is perfect. I always used to get so mad at myself when I would forget to put tape on either side of the joints because the paper would buckle up and it would be so annoying. There's nothing more annoying than that when you've taken all this time to make this beautiful cover. Okay, so here we've got it. We have got the covers to our C-sized album. I was gonna put the binding strips on, but I'm not sure how how long Sawyer's gonna let me talk without her, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll give it a try. Let's see if she'll be tolerant enough for a little bit longer. All right, so in the templates, there is a page specifically for the binding strips right here. This is page six. And I went ahead and printed it just onto white cardstock. Now with the D size album, we print it, <laughs> we print it onto Tyvek, um, which is fine. It worked perfect, but not everybody has Tyvek. And I wanted to show you that um, you can totally just use white cardstock. So this is 80 pound cardstock. I have it linked in my Amazon if you want to check it out. And we are going to be using, we're going to be just using the two main um, sets of binding strips. So let me grab my paper trimmer. I don't think we're going to add pages on, but you never know. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just trim the whole thing out all the way around, you know, all the way around the edges here. See, my printer sucked this paper in super fast and started printing a little bit further down the page. Printers do that sometimes, you guys. I can't stress enough how finicky printers can be sometimes. Um, and so keep that in mind if something is wonky when you print it out. It could just be, you know, that your printer sucked it in too fast or it thinks it's a different type of paper or you have it marked as um, cardstock when it's just paper or paper when it's cardstock, that kind of stuff. All of that matters. It, it tells your printer how, um, what to expect when it pulls that piece of paper in and you know and all that jazz so it doesn't it is important to know you know what no okay so the first three sections is one set and then there's a space in between i'm cutting that little space off and then the next three sections is the second it. And that that is all we need for now. But I am going to put this uh, over here in my crafty companion so that if I need to add more pages, I've got that sh exact sheet that I've already used um, in the book. So now we've got these. So this is, I forgot to tell you guys, this is the, what is that noise? I forgot to tell you guys, this is the stack the deck binding is all this is. So if you didn't want to print it off, and um, cut it out like that. You could just make your own. All right, this is the We Are Memory Keepers scoreboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to score on all of these lines. Um, back to this. This is a stack the deck is what this is. And I will link her original video, Laura Dennison's original video, where she showed this for the first time on YouTube. It's amazing. I love it. It's one of my favorites. 
um, it's one of my favorite binding systems. Easy, you can't mess it up. I mean, you really just can't. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prep all of these pieces and I'm gonna burnish and I'm gonna burnish and then I'm gonna flip it over, burnish again. Flip it, flip it, flip it, burnish, okay. So then the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and ink these up because you're gonna see some of the edges. So I'm using the Distress Oxide and Walnut Stain. And this is a uh, Ranger's blending tool. So I'm gonna ink these sides up because again, you might see those. You probably won't see the top, so I'm just gonna do this where the, where the uh, score is and then the top and bottom. Okay, right, and then you might want to, if, the, if you didn't cut it correctly, you're actually, you probably don't even need to do this. I almost never cut correctly, and that should tell you something. If I almost never cut correctly, and they're my templates, and they still turn out fantastic, <laughs> no matter what I do, no matter how hard I mess, try to mess it up, <laughs> you, that should give you lots of confidence that you can do it too. Okay, so I'm just gonna ink these up real quick. And then this is my ink station. I have an ink station and a garbage bow video. Right, these are made from my Crafty Companion templates. So um, I will link that up there if I've got space and I'll have it down in the description box as well. If you wanna see how I made those, super simple, but isn't that pretty? I've got one for my brown and then I've got one for my black sitting here. I just, I love them, I just love them. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna put tape. Okay, so I'm gonna take this eighth of an inch and I'm gonna go along one edge here Oh, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? She gets to talking and yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that down and then I'm gonna remove it because I'm gonna put the three eighths in. It's gonna overlap just a little. So you don't wanna go past your score mark, but you do wanna go right up to it because you don't want it like lifting up too much. So, all right, we're gonna do that. Just like that. So there's a one, and then with this one, wait a minute, let me see. I'm gonna do three eighths. Uh oh. Hey, what's the matter? Are you, you, can you see me? What is your toy not behaving? Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to take a quarter of an inch in that space there. We're going to burnish that down. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this one on top of the, the big one. Yeah. And literally, <laughs> what was that? You should just literally be able to line it up right smack in the middle right there and just walk it down just like that. And it should be a perfect, perfecto. Right? See? On either side. Lovely. Okay. So then we're gonna pull our covers in and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna lay it flat like this and attach it down. Okay? Right, let's take the backing off. Just 
She's so cute. She is just adorable. All right, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to try to eyeball, get it right in the center here. As best I can. I think I did a good job. Whoop! And then I moved it. <laughs> As long as you don't press down, you're okay. You got a second. Let's try it again. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to burnish it down. So I'm going to take the all. I'm going to take these two fins and lay them that away. And I'm going to take these two fins and lay them that away. Oops. How did I not get that edge? I missed an edge. I don't know. Burnish this way, right? Burnish that way. All right, now our binding strips are in the album. So I think that's what we're gonna, we're gonna stop there. So we are gonna stop here. Uh, in the next video, we'll start adding pages in. I haven't figured out exactly <laughs> how I'm gonna <laughs> do it yet, but, um, I think we're going to start adding pages. So I'm not going to do it exactly like this book, but it's going to be pretty close. So I'll probably add a little bit more into it. Of course, you can make it just like the uh, mock-up, the prototype. Um, if you followed the flip through, you could, you could probably guess what you need to do. You could make it just like that, but we're not going to make it exactly, exactly. Um, so we're not going to do the covers just yet, just because sometimes the covers kind of get in the way when you're working, you know, so we're going to go ahead and start adding pages in the next time in the next video. So, okay, you guys, that's all I got for you today. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Oh, she likes it. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification and then turn the notifications on so that you are notified when I upload another video. So be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time. Bye.